the only scene I'm thinking about is this, the LSD scene, which actually became, we actually had, we played with that one a bit. Sophia stuck us in a room, turned psychedelic lights on, and went into another room, and we had one camera guy in there, and she just said, do whatever you want. And then at one point, I'm crawling up to a ceramic tiger, and I'm pretending like it's whispering secrets in my ears, and it just got weird, and we were really giggly and loopy, and that, that, that was fun. I am Perry Nemiroff with Collider, and I am beyond thrilled to be here tonight because we get to talk to the star of Priscilla. It is my honor to introduce you all to Kaylee Spaney. Thank you. Congratulations Thank yet you again. So much. This is something else. All right, let's go back to the very, very beginning, of course, signing on to this movie. When this opportunity first came your way, what was it about it that signaled to you, this is the next best step for me as an actor evolving my craft? Well, well I think when you get a call saying Sofia Coppola wants to meet with you, I mean, you don't need any more information than that. You're like, yeah, great, I'll be there, whatever she wants. <laughs> I mean, Sofia was my dream director and uh, I, I grew up watching her films as a young teenage girl. So, um, you know, I, I, it was the first time when I watched her movies, it was the first time I ever asked myself who's behind the camera and then I watched her whole filmography of work and, um, so, so to get that call that she wanted to meet with me, I didn't know what it was for. Um, I just, just she just wanted to get coffee, and so I was, I, I, I was there in a heartbeat. I packed my bags and headed for New York, and and then, um, you know, sat down in front of her. I was trying to act cool, really having croissants, and I'm like thinking like, what is this about? <laughs> and then um, she started. She pulled out photos of Priscilla Presley and and said, um, you know, I think Priscilla's story is so fascinating and. I grew up an Elvis fan, um, you know, I was born in Tennessee and raised in Southern Missouri and, you know, um, so, but I didn't, I didn't know Priscilla's side of the story. So to, to go into this project with some, someone like Sophia and have this story in her hands, I, I thought I couldn't have, I couldn't imagine anyone else doing it, you know, so it was all very exciting and quite the whirlwind. So you dreamed of working with her. You've also worked with some very, very talented directors along the way. Do you notice any shared traits among the directing greats, but then also what is something about Sophia that sets her apart from everybody else you've worked with? Yeah, I think what you want as an actor is, is to try to surround yourself with creatives who have a distinctive view, you know? Um, I think within the first five seconds of watching this movie, you, you're you like, that's a Sofia Coppola movie, which I always think is exciting. Um, uh, but I think, Sophia was fascinating because of the way that she holds herself on set. I find that a lot of directors feel the need to sort of prove themselves and sort of, uh, uh, you know, they go through the steps of, uh, you know, whatever they need to do to show that they are the ones in power, you know. And I, I think I think that was what was so refreshing about working with a female director and a, a director who is so confident in their vision that she didn't have any of that. There was no ego involved and she creates an environment that's so calm and collaborative and you know, we only had thirty days to shoot this movie, so we all were just sort of running around like chickens with our head cut off, you know, but but Sophia was so great in grounding us and uh creating an environment where we felt uh, safe. I'm coming back to filming this in 30 days, but first I love asking this question, especially of directors that I really admire. Does Sophia have a monitor dance? Like what does she do behind the monitor when you absolutely nail a take? She's way too cool for a monitor <laughs> dance. I think she goes, I believe that. yeah, that's great. Okay, I feel good, moving on. <laughs> she keeps it really chill. Um, uh, she, she, she plays, music when we're on set which is a fun thing I think that sets her apart she you know her her um soundtracks are so iconic and uh I think this one's so much fun in the way that she uses music in this movie to tell this story um but she uses music on set as well when we're um getting ready to do a scene or maybe in the middle of the scene that last scene with uh, the Dolly Parton track she was actually playing that in the car as I was doing that that take um so they're they're definitely little like Coppola 
isms here and there, like little quirks. And she also loves pickleball. We had a pickleball court on set in between takes. That's a fun fact. On a 30 day shoot, we found time to have pick play pickleball during lunch. Um, yeah, we had fun. All right, so this is not gonna come as a surprise to you. I found a way to squeeze horror into this conversation. Oh. <laughs> so your first lead role in a feature film was The Craft Legacy, which would make this your second lead role in a feature film. Is there anything about having done that on The Craft that you found coming in handy being, you know, like top tier with a trickle down effect on this set? I mean, I think this was, uh, the weight of this role was unlike any other because I, I was also keeping Priscilla Presley in, in mind and you know I, I sat down with her multiple times and I think the sort of mystic legend that Priscilla and Elvis have completely go out the window when you sit down with the human being herself you know and I just felt that that immense pressure to get it right for her and um, you know to, to make sure she felt like um, seen when she saw this movie and that it was in the right hands. Um, you know, I think being a lead of a project, there there's another, you know, there's another weight of responsibility in trying to make sure you set the tone when you're on set and that you're everyone's having a good time and the crew's happy to go to work. Obviously, that's Sophia, but it's also the lead of the project. You know, you you want to make sure um, you're being a team player. Just because I always love highlighting positive forces in this industry. Of all of your past films, is there any number one on the call sheet that you really admired and appreciated that you now find influencing yourself and how you carry yourself when you're number one on the call sheet? Um, oddly, Jeff Bridges. <laughs> oddly. I believe that. <laughs> I mean, I... I, he he just I felt like he had the perfect balance of taking things seriously and also knowing when to have fun and to laugh and be like we're making a movie how lucky are we um him uh Kate Winslet uh, is a, you know absolute legend and and uh, uh you know the thing that stays consistent with all those actors who are these greats is that um they take time to to really check in on everyone and and have those personal connections and they're they're kind and good people so uh um yeah people like that got very lucky to work with people like that yeah. kindness should always be first all right let's get into some of your prep work here this might be like an overly prescribed question and not the way you approached it but when you're trying to prepare to play priscilla what was the first thing that you kind of nailed that made you think i am on the right track to bringing her to screen but then i also want to know like the last piece of the puzzle the last piece of her that like you got right and felt confident in that made you think i have like a full view of her and her experience gosh i wish i i would i wish i had that feeling ever in my life that i went oh yes this is it i got it um no, I felt like I was just sort of accumulating all the information I could between having those in-depth conversations with Priscilla herself and then doing research, reading the book, um, you know, watching watching home videos. Um, the final piece for sure was the hair and makeup and costumes and the, they did such a beautiful job. Um, you know, because we only shot in such a short amount of time and we shot wildly out of order, it was really like, you know, I was I was pregnant in the morning and 14 after lunch. It was like I it was like d depending on what wig I had on my head really was the thing that um, let me know <laughs> where I was in her, her emotional arc. So, um, you know, and you just move differently when you're in those different costumes. And um, so, so that that really helped me navigate and keep my head on straight. So, so many follow-up questions right now. So you brought up sitting down with Priscilla. Is there anything that we can now see in the movie that you know you only got from having that personal one-on-one -on -one time with her where no amount of research could have gotten you there? It was having that connection and her being generous with her time. Uh, I think um, this, is, this, is a, this is a woman from a different era, you know? Um, and I wanted, I didn't want it to feel like a, mo a modern woman. I didn't, you know, a teenager now is different from a teenager back in those days. And and she she has a certain amount of poise to her, and she she she's she's almost sort of royal like in the way that she holds herself. And she's really shy, and she she's the quietest person in the room. And she um, there's something she she's soft spoken and you know all those things that. When I sat in front of her, I just felt like, you know, looking into this, these, 
these eyes and this woman who's lived s- such a life, you know, and, and taking that in. Um, but I really think the, uh, the woman from a different generation and, and uh, taking note of that, I, I think that that was big. And, you know, the, the one thing she said to me is j- just make sure that the love is there between them because obviously it's a very strange and tumultuous relationship, but the love was, w- was there. And I think she thinks fondly when she looks back at this, these times and she has a lot of, you know, to, to show the lows, but also show the highs, I think that was important to us. Great success in that respect. I know we got a couple questions about uh, working with Jacob in that pile, too, that I will get to. The answer to this question might be no, but I was wondering when you're playing a character who experiences such a, like, a big evolution, do you have to come up with some sort of anchor, like something that stays consistent so that even though she's growing and changing, all of her decisions are kind of based in some sort of consistent truth? Mm, that's it's a great question I think m- maybe that care between them and um uh, you know along the w- along the way trying to her fight to keep that relationship alive and even when she left she had a lot of love for him and then making that decision that she had more to give and you know her becoming a mother I think really changed uh things for her and that she then became responsible for her daughter as well um but I think holding on to that connection and you know taking that time to hang out with Jacob before we started filming was really important um make sure we had a rapport there um I think that that was the thing that we tried to keep consistent along the way Pulling up the, the Jacob question that I wanted, because it does kind of tie into that. This question came from Lindsay. Um, I read you were cast without a chemistry read with Jacob Elordi. How did you feel about this, and how did you develop what we now see on screen in the finished film? Um, y- yeah, I think that I made me a, b- a bit nervous, because you never know what you're getting into with a co-star. Um, but I was obviously a, a big fan of his work and was excited to, to meet him, and um, I basically emailed him the second that I knew he got the role and I forced him to be my friend and hang out with me. <laughs> um, so I, I like came up with all these activities for us to do um, that were Elvis and Priscilla themed, which were like horseback riding and which is a terrible way to get to know someone when they're like riding a horse behind you and you're like, so what was your childhood like? <laughs> Um, but uh, we then we watched some movies together and we just hung out. But I think the biggest thing for me was I was I was so relieved in how he pr- approaches his work and how seriously he takes it. And um, he was someone I could always call up um, to s- s- sort of like study swap notes. Um, and he he uh, he just put his heart and soul into this, and we took it very seriously. And we both tried to do as much homework as we could. So um, I I just felt like he was someone who I could rely on, and he was someone who, when I came on to set, he would always have a new idea or n- know when to flip a scene on, on its head if it needed to. And uh, surprisingly, uh, <laughs> some actors you work with turn off whenever they turn the cameras around on <laughs> on uh, you, which is a really odd thing to me. And I needed someone who's going to be generous and in their performance, and he was definitely that. And um, uh, you know, I, I think he has more dialogue than me in this movie, and a lot of it is just, you know, these sort of s- shots hanging on my face and uh, trying to take in. And th- I, I really was just bouncing off of him the whole movie, so I had to s- have someone who was going to sort of go there with me and be a team player, and he definitely was. Oh, I'm desperately trying to clock all my follow-up questions right now. Sticking with Jacob for a minute, uh, yet another complicated two-parter here. What is something about the way the two of you approach your work that's the same, where when you met, you were immediately in sync? But then also, can you give us an example of a time on set when, you know, maybe he surprised you or challenged you to adapt and a scene turned out for the better because of it? Mm. Uh, the the way that we're we're similar is that we just we uh, we put our nose down and we do we do the work you know we I, I I think I barely saw him when we were shooting this movie Offset we were just like gotta go home time for the next scene we're you know we were we were just we were just in it he stayed in his voice the whole time he um he he just he does it for the right reasons you know he he loves film he 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 wants to do a good job we wanted to do a good job not only for Priscilla and the story, but we both were fans of Sophia. So, um, 
Mm, the only thing I can remember that's coming to my head is that that chair scene when he throws the chair. They, for safety reasons, um, he he definitely. I do, I don't know how safe this was. The stunt people came in and said we need to cut whenever you throw the chair. We can't see you throwing the chair just to make sure we don't hit Kaylee for safety reasons. And he's like, it messes up with the momentum of the scene, and I I have to throw the chair. And I was like, yeah, I'm yeah, I agree. It helps with the scene. Um, so that that was him fighting for a moment that I think is actually worth it um because i think that scene is terrifying very very powerful all right i'm going to go back to the 30-day filming schedule which again it's like blowing my mind that you accomplish all that in such a short period of time i'll split this up to make it easier and not smush these questions together first what particular scene was that i guess the most high pressure kind of situation where it was really important that you all get it done and you get it done fast and you did and it doesn't matter that you didn't have more time there was a lot of scenes where we were losing light and we'd have one take. So the final shot of the movie was one take. The scene where uh, Priscilla's coming out of the hospital uh, after she'd just given birth with all the paparazzi around, that was one take. That was also a lot of pressure on hair, makeup, and costume because that was an iconic look that we all know um, with the huge beehive and the, uh, you know, the very precise eyeliner and that dress you know so I remember the producers had to come in and say put your brushes down we have to stop and we have to film the scene we're running out of time and then they handed me a newborn baby and I'm in a wheelchair and I'm wa trying to walk down these stairs in high heels and trying to watch my bouffant when I tr try to not hit it when I go into the car it's like double head um, but but yeah there were lots of scenes like that it was the whole film really you don't notice it all looks so good and so perfect Thankfully. the other side of that question I don't know how much you you can influence a filming schedule but was there any particular scene that was most important to you to have more time to, to think about and to play with on set well I don't know I don't know if this was I don't know if Sophia t intentionally did this I think she did she she planned the 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 goodbye scene and the walking into the hallway that was actually the last shot of the movie um which was emotional for the crew and and the cast and um you know just just me taking this in as an actor coming from you know a small town in the midwest loving sofia coppola's films and then wrapping this you know this last day and then this emotional scene what the characters were going through i think that that one was really special and so we took time on that one another beautiful moment right there so you brought up the the chair scene and how that changed can you give us another example of you know a day on set where maybe you all hit a roadblock you had to find kind of a creative solution a way to pivot and you found something special that made the scene even better hmm I, we didn't really have much time to have Roblox um uh uh, the, oh, sorry, the only scene I'm thinking about is this, the LSD scene, which actually became, we actually had, we played with that one a bit, and it was just, Sophia stuck us in a room, turned psychedelic lights on, and went into another room, and we had one camera guy in there, and she just said, do whatever you want. And then at one point, I'm crawling up to a ceramic tiger, and I'm pretending like it's whispering secrets in my ears, and but it just got weird, and we were really giggly and loopy, and... That 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 was fun. That sounds pretty That's not really a pivot, but there were some days where she just like do whatever you want. So now going back to um, the idea of not filming this in order, because like, a lot of a lot of films don't film in order. But given the part of her life that we're tracking and the significant evolution she experiences, I have to imagine something like that is extremely difficult. So what kind of techniques do you like to use in order to be able to make that pivot and make it after lunch if you have to? Yeah, playing the age range from 14 to, you know, 28, that that was something that, y you know, when you're doing something like that, you really have to lean on your fellow creatives. And I think e anyone who works with Sophia brings their A game. So you really had to trust that all of the departments, you know, had done their research and um, they, they did. They did a beautiful job. So it was it was really, you know, turning to my uh, to the other heads of departments and Sophia and Jacob and. And, and that's what really kept me grounded along with the hair and makeup and costumes. And then you just do whatever prep you can and you cross your fingers and, you know, it's like jumping out of a plane and, and trying to build the parachute as you go down. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's what, that is uh, probably an accurate way to describe it. So you brought up the the hair, makeup, and costumes. Also, the production design in this movie is exceptional. Is there any uh, you know a particular uh, detail you could pinpoint on set that you know I don't know just like caught your eye and wound up being useful in terms of like filling out her world and making it feel whole to you? Well, I yeah the detail the the props and the the set they were there was such an immersive world to to go into. I think. Tamara Deverell, who um, is from Toronto, did such a beautiful job in recreating Graceland. You know, I think she she talked about it feeling like you're walking into a wedding cake, and um, I think that's such a, a great visual. And and uh, um, uh, Philippe Lasorde, our cinematographer, really leaning into you know what what it was like pre Elvis and the days in in um, Germany and. Um, or, or without Elvis, and then you know, going into this sort of Alice in Wonderland like dreamland, um, and then and then the props and the insert shots really are. I mean, Sofia Coppola is so sort of brilliant at telling stories within those little small details. So I felt like you could open a drawer and it would just be filled with with little, um, d you know, like uh, nail polishes and lipsticks and pearls and you know you were just right there it was, it was so tangible I, I was so lucky to work with those people makes all the difference silly question but I have to ask it did you get to keep anything from one of those sets um they sent the mural of me um as Priscilla that's hung up in Graceland and I just am like thank you also what am I gonna do I'm not gonna hang a photo of myself as Priscilla I think I gotta ship it to my grandma or something because it's just too I don't know what to do with it but yeah I got I got a couple of um I got like an I love Elvis pin with Jacob's face on it. That's a and nice thing to hold on to. Yeah, I'll keep that a forever. A nice little thing. I like that. <laughs> um, so we brought up a lot of the, the crafts team behind the movie. And I, I'll preface this question by saying like it's unfair and you could list probably a million people. But can you name maybe an unsung hero who worked on this set? Someone where we don't get to see their face or hear their name often enough, but they made the day to day that much easier for you and you appreciate them. So, 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 I mean, Stacy Batat, our costume designer, who's worked with Sophia many times before, but she, this is her first, um, her second period piece. But, but she had just for my character, she had more costumes for me than page count in the script. So to take something like that on was absolutely massive, and I just thought her attention to detail and where she took creative liberty, and you know, obviously the fashion is so fun in this movie, but is so key in her emotional arc, going from being a child to then being this sort of doll for Elvis and all the rules that Elvis had in terms of fashion and then when Priscilla decides to break those rules with fashion you know when she starts wearing denim you know he didn't like he wasn't a fan of denim it's like yeah it, it was it was it was really t for her to to sort of capture that and to really wrap her head around such a huge task was amazing to see. This might be me overthinking things again, but given uh, you just brought up her, her breaking rules, and also I love the moments where it, ju it just seems like with such specificity, like it is time for her to like speak her truth and what she wants. How much are you kind of calibrating that all throughout the film? Is it a different tone every single time she does it for you? Every time she kind of like asserts, you know, her truth and what she wants, because there's so many specific moments where, you know, I'm thinking about the chair throwing scene, for example, where she says to him, like, no, I'm going to tell you what I truly feel. And this song is not working. Uh, in terms of playing each, did, uh, did I try to tune that in? Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. I mean, like with intensify it, I guess, along abs the way. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that was something I was trying. I was, I, I wanted her to feel like she was growing up before your eyes. And I wanted her, uh, all of those moments in her life when, when it, it, things started rubbing her the wrong way more and more. And uh, as she was trying to grow into herself and making decisions for herself, I, I, I wanted it to feel like she, was you were watching this young girl go into adulthood and then decide that she wanted something more for herself. So I really tried to dial that in depending on each age and each you know point in her life. It's such a sex successful build in that respect. All right, we have a question from Kira. What is the biggest pressure of playing a real person? Yeah, well, you know, pl uh, playing a real person has, has a certain amount of pressure on it. But then knowing that that person is going to watch the film at the end of this, 
it is it's just it's uh, it's so surreal you know i hadn't seen the movie until we took it to venice uh, which i wasn't going to do cuz i just find it too weird to watch myself on screen for 2 hours in every frame it's too much but um so they were going to pull me out on the venice screening and then i turned to sophie and i said uh, what do you think i should do and she said i think you should watch it you should be proud and so i said okay fine i'm not going to tell sophia no <laughs> so i sat i sat there on the front row but they sat me right next to priscilla presley herself so not only am i watching myself for 2 hours <laughs> on screen i i i'm then having to you know sit next to the woman taking this you know and she hadn't told me what she thought of it yet and it wasn't until thank god you know we had a, a really wonderful reception there and it was the first time she turned to me and said that um you know I, I watched my life through you and through this movie and the weight off my shoulders when she said that it was massive it like broke down into tears um so so yeah that that's the that's the biggest <laughs> challenge with that because you just said that you don't love watching yourself, it makes me want to ask this question. When you see the movie now, is there anything in particular you do in it that you know you're going to be able to look back on it and say to yourself, like, damn, I am proud of what I did there, and it's going to give you confidence on future challenges on sets? Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm, you want me to tell me something that I'm proud of? I, I say this all the time. I'm such a big believer that nobody in this industry says good job to themselves nearly enough. We say it to everyone else and that is wonderful, but I think we I, need to say it to ourselves more often. I feel so embarrassed telling you this audience about the thing that I'm proud of. Uh, I, I'm proud of the age, the age rage. And I was really scared about playing a 14 year old and not it feeling hokey. And I wanted it to feel like she was 14. So I, that's the thing that I feel a little, I feel relieved about when I see it. Um, because you know, that, that was so important to me, um, to it all feel genuine and hopefully, hopefully you guys think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> Thanks guys. So another thing that I absolutely love about the filmmaking process is I love how a story essentially evolves every step of the way from writing to on set to edit. But then also it's like a film takes on new life when it gets out there into the world. So is there any scene or specific thing in this movie you've come to appreciate more based on the audience response and how it's moved people and how people have interpreted it? I don't, I don't, I don't, I try to not look at anything on the internet, so I don't know exactly what they're saying. Um, maybe if I was in like the TikTok world, I'd have a better insight in what people like or don't like. Um, I, I, people have said that the ending is very moving with that last needle drop with Dolly. And you know, that song was so important to them as a couple. Um, Elvis wanted to record it. And, you know, I know that Sophia wanted a female voice at the end. Um, Dolly ended up saying, you know, I, I want the rights to this, to this song. And, uh, uh, Elvis sang that song to her when they were, they were li leaving the courtroom and they got divorced. So that, 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 that song has so many layers to it. So I think that, that moment, and it just sort of sums everything up that, that song at the end. So. Maybe I'm just naming a scene I like. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good scene, and you can avoid TikTok all you want, but then you get in front of an audience like this, and it's like right in your face, yeah. like loving what you did in this movie. We have to wind down in a moment, and I love ending with these types of questions. What is a new tool in your acting toolkit that you know you can attribute to your experience making Priscilla that you're eager to put to use on a future film? I wish I sounded smarter when I talked about acting. I wish I like <laughs> was like, oh yeah, this tool. I think the thing, the talking about being a lead on a set is something else. You're taking something else on. You're carrying a different weight. It's not just about your performance and you know thinking about your. You, you have to you have to show up every day. Y you you better make sure you're right there, tuned in with your other collaborators. You know they're pulling weight as much as you are. You know, and I, 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 I hope that, you know, when I get acknowledged for my work that the people behind, behind the scenes that are, are holding me up are also getting that acknowledgement. And I think, I think that's, it's just something I got really lucky because I, I started at 18 and I got to just be a fly in the wall watching these greats act. And I got, you know, I got, I got to take all that in. So I, I think that now I get to apply that to, to doing roles like, like this and, and hopefully that'll carry with me. 
of that. And I will say you sound very smart with all these answers because I feel I feel like the ability to act in that craft, I mean, everyone here probably knows, I feel like that's such a difficult thing to be able to articulate at all. So the fact that you could share some of your process with us right now is really something else. So last question here, another big career question. Do you have any personal filmmaking goals that now feel within reach to you even more so because you've done this movie, because Priscilla exists, because you started it and you're so damn good in it that you could achieve this goal next? I just hope that I keep working with directors ha that have distinctive visions, you know. Um, that, that, that would be my, my goal. I just wanna keep collaborating with people that inspire me and that sort of light a fire within me. And I feel lucky that I've gotten to do that with several directors I've worked with and especially someone like Sophia. So if I can keep that going, I mean, I already feel like the luckiest girl in the world right now. And if I, if I, if I get to, get to, to keep people want to keep casting me and things, that, that would be amazing. But I, I try to seek out the ones that are exciting and who are pushing the envelope in the way that they tell their stories. You've been doing that quite a bit. You do it again here, I have no doubt. You will do it in the future. Kaylee, huge congratulations thank on you Priscilla. So much. And thank you so much for being here with us Thanks tonight. Thanks, guys, for watching.